Hey guys, Stefan from Subly here. I hope you're all well. If you can hear me, please comment so I know that everything's working. I'm not seeing any comments. one viewer or not. If you can hear me, please uh, comment so um, I know that you can hear me. Welcome guys. I'm just gonna wait for more people to join. Um, if you can hear me, please comment so I know that you can hear me. Can you all hear me? I'm not seeing any comments. I'm not sure why. Let me see if I go in the group. Sorry, bear with me two seconds, guys. I'm loading up the uh, feed on my computer so that I can see comments because they're not appearing here right now. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm seeing the comments now on my computer, so um, I'm going to have to have... I'm going to be looking this way because I'm going to be looking at my screen, but I'm here on my phone. Okay, cool. All right. Awesome. Thank you for joining, guys. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, I'm excited for this. This is the second AMA that we're doing. Um, AMA meaning ask me anything. Um, don't take that too literally. <laughs> um, so this has been good. This is a really great turnout. So the format today is um, we've got lots of pre-asked questions on the event page. Um, it allows me to just do a little bit of pre preparation. Um, so I'm going to go through answering as many of those as possible because we had a really good response rate this time. Um, but I'm going to do something slightly different this time compared to last time and I'm going to, it's a bit of an experiment. Um, basically, there's been a couple of people asking for feedback on their, their websites inside uh, the group and I'm thinking that this might be a really useful exercise if I go through and offer feedback on each uh, website or you know one or two per per every two weeks because that's how frequently we're going to be doing these AMAs we did a poll on the group and you guys said that you'd rather us do or me do them every two weeks so I think it'd be really good to take like two examples or one example each AMA and go through it and give fe feedback like you know uh, constructive criticism to say these are areas that you could improve upon um, to help increase uh, your conversion rates maybe even SEO uh, or just in general like the user experience and design so um, if this is something that works nicely um, another thing I'm gonna ask you to do at the end is to give likes and feedback to say that you enjoyed this format or that you want us to do more of this and less of that just let us know because this is for you guys and um, you know if, it, if you guys enjoy it then we're gonna do more of them so Let's uh, start with answering these questions that you guys have pre-asked, and thank you for doing that, by the way. I appreciate it, and uh, I hope I can add value. That's my goal here, is I want you guys to try and get as much as possible. And just to be clear, I don't know the answers to every single like possible question with regards to subscription boxes. I mean, I have a lot of experience. It's just, you know, there's sometimes very unique uh, questions. Um, and also, if I don't answer your questions during the AMAs, we will get to you, Andre and I will get to you um, in the comments uh, after the event or, um, you know, sometimes people might comment 
on the video that's published after the, that it's been live, uh, we'll answer those as well in the comments. So don't be alarmed if we don't respond. Um, and there's always, again, the next AMA in two weeks' time. Cool. So let's get to it. Um, I hope you're uh, all good wherever you are in the world. It's roasting hot here today. Uh, there's been a heat wave in Los Angeles. It's um, been 104 Fahrenheit, uh, around about 39, 40 Celsius, depending on where you are in the world. So um, it's pretty warm out here. <laughs> um, all right, cool. So the f let's get to the questions. All right, so Christine, she's asked us, how do you choose the right influencers? How do you approach them? And how do you decide what collaboration to ask them for? I'm wanting more than a single Instagram post for me sending them a free box. Okay, this is a good question. Um, this was kind of uh, touched upon in the last AMA. Now, the, the key here is, uh, number one, is you want your, uh, the influencers you approach to have your target audience. So if you've got you know, a specific demographic that you're targeting, say for example, uh, at-home mothers, um, you know, you're gonna want to find Instagram users or bloggers who target these people or have followers who are your demographic. So that's number one. Number two isn't the number of followers. It's not, you know, um, yeah, a million followers, 500,000 followers. You, you, want, you care most about engagement and loyalty of their followers. And you can do a really basic calculation on this or a comparison. Just go into the first 10 posts and see how many likes there are compared to the number of followers that they have. Because, you know, people are able to fake it um, or they'll have poor quality content and they get, you know, a burst of followers and then the rest of their posts are not engaging enough. So I would really consider that as well when you're, when you're choosing which uh, influencers to uh, target. Um, you want high engagement. I wouldn't worry too much about follower account. I mean, obviously, I would set like a minimum, say a thousand. If you've got the more niche your demographic is, from point number one, the less likely they're going to have huge followings anyway. But that's okay because if they've got a really loyal fan base, they're more likely to convert. So, and regarding the second question, I'm sorry, I'm having to jump between tabs here as well because I need to see the comments. The comments are not coming up on my phone. Um, Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so back to Christine's question here. Um, how do you approach them? This really depends. I would, um, it's kind of like an outbound strategy. You, you, you're gonna have to experiment with what works for the types of people that you're targeting. So it's trial and error, but you're gonna want to, first of all, persistence can pay off, um, but also you don't wanna come across as spammy. You want to spark their interest. Um, if you're not if you're not familiar with copywriting techniques or sales in terms of copy and writing, um, I would look into the ADA formula. Um, it's a good approach. Um, it's more salesy though. Um, it's just good for like teaching you the principles of, um, you know, uh, getting their attention, trying and spark interest, etc. And ADA is A I D A. Um, so have, have a look for that. Um, and then regarding the um, what collaboration to ask them for? I would suggest that it depends because if if you're cash rich as a bit business or you've got money set aside for a marketing budget, then you could offer them cash incentive. Um, I've heard about partnerships where there's like uh, an affiliate setup where they get a commission or you know a percentage cut. Um, that could work as well. It just depends on who you're dealing with. Um, some people are, are more incentivized by money. More, some people are more incentivized by free products, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, the next thing as well is uh, you're wanting more than a single Instagram post. That's a difficult one, and I agree with this because social media is a very short-lived cycle. You know, if you post, um, you know, one post, it's gone after that day um, or you know after uh, in, Instagram is not too bad for this actually Instagram you can probably have a life cycle of a post like a day and a half um, but things like Twitter five minutes not even seconds so you have to keep posting to get as much of a reach as possible with regards to the followers so with Instagram it's not as big of an issue but I agree with this like you want to maybe try and get a couple of posts over a period of time um, but the problem is for the influencers point of view they're not gonna want to spam their followers with constant posts about you either so 
maybe you need to work that out directly with them like you know say part of the deal is one post per week for two weeks or something like that um and uh, and maybe making the placement a bit more subtle and less advertising so it's like more of a, a subtle kind of placement product placement almost um so consider those so i'm going to move on to the next one again christine is it worth to start a brand ambassador program what's a fair exchange for each ambassador uh, free box discount etc or is an affiliate program a better way to go um, there are much of a similar there, there's a lot of similarities there I mean it just depends on how you're defining a brand ambassador program I mean if you're talking about having like specific people like you know influencers etc being those brand ambassadors then you could all wrap it into an affiliate program anyway if you're running an affiliate program it's very flexible you could actually have your customers using it you could have anybody using it so I, I would just go keep, keep your life simple don't try and I mean a brand ambassador sounds great it's, a, it's cool it's exciting um, but it might be a hard sell and plus you're gonna have to have some like uh, buy, buying power selling power um, so you, your brand's gonna have to have a bit more clout in order to be able to say we we should have brand ambassadors affiliates a bit more like uh, common terminology people are like looking to earn something out of it win something out of it so I think I would just call it an affiliate program and, and start there uh, subly uh, we have a built-in uh, refer a friend program which is really great for getting your customers to refer their friends um, it's it's free apart from an additional transaction fee um, so that's a, that's a new feature recently so check that out as well if you're if that helps you Christine um, okay let me see here Bobby thanks for posting that Andrea yeah Andrea's uh, check look, look out for Andrea's comments by the way um, he's gonna be posting um, links as re references for um, anything that I mentioned that's worth looking at. Uh, Bobby Fresh, uh, you have a lot of success with Instagram DMs? Yeah, that's how you would reach them. Sorry, I should have made that more clear. You're going to have to contact them somehow. So on Instagram, the way to do that is DMs. You're going to have to slide into their DMs as the common terminology goes with all the cool kids. Um, and also, I do an ambassador program. I give one free product and coupon code to them to tomorrow if they give me any anyone. Yeah, that's a good way of doing it. A coupon code, so you could create a unique coupon code um, and give it to them, so you could track the sales that they get. That's a really simple implementation of it, um, and you can do that with uh, Stripe, for example, and just go in and create your coupon code and give it to the brand uh, ambassador or the influencer, or whatever you're going to call them, and then um, and then as they drive sales, you'll be able to. Um, see how many they've generated and then give them their commission if it's a commission basis thanks for that Bobby I appreciate your uh, input on that actually it's good um, okay next Katie I'm gonna uh, get to you and uh, Rashmi soon I'm gonna use you guys as, uh, as examples for giving some feedback on websites um, to help with that conversion rate George Kleinthaus, I'm guessing you're a Greek. Um, George from Modelbox here. Um, just want to know how to break past the wall with subscribers. Cannot seem to grow further numbers despite advertising through Facebook. Influencers, i.e. podcasts, YouTube and sponsoring events. I've thought about booking tables at conventions, but it can be quite pricey and difficult to get the uh, conference goers to commit to signing up. What would you suggest to break past their current subscriber number of 110 subscribers? Um, George, I asked you a couple of follow-up questions. Thanks for getting back to me on those. Um, the reason I was asking was because, um, you know, not not necessarily knowing your business inside and out. Let me just have a quick look here at your Facebook page, um, model box. Uh, let's see. Click sign up. Two sacks. Oh, I see. Yeah, model hobbyists. Okay, cool. Um, oh man, this takes me back to my childhood. <laughs> I used to make Airfix models. Um, good times. That's cool. Uh, all right, cool. So, yeah, I think this is really niche, uh, which is good because actually that's going to help if you're uh, able to, you know, make it easier for you to target people um, with the right message and the right, uh, you know, um, demographic targeting. So, I think. Hold on, I'm trying to find the, the right tab again. I think for you. Um, this this could be an optimization issue so I would look at trying to maybe see if you can I mean I'm guessing you with your Facebook ads for example you've got your uh, audience set up 
and it's there's a limit for your audience now if you've maxed out that audience then you're gonna have to look at other ways of doing it and maybe reaching uh, people through different channels or, and um, or changing your audience slightly to get like synonymous audiences um, but if you haven't then this could be an op you know uh, a cost per click ish issue so maybe you're you're budget limited um, so maybe you want to try and optimize your ad copy to make it more relevant and therefore bring the price down if you can um, maybe look at retargeting as well and you could take a good content strategy so maybe posting um, really good quality content that's relevant to your audience and and then placing your Facebook pixel on there and then collecting an audience and driving con driving traffic to your content through ads initially to then have them captured on um, uh, the Facebook pixel as, an, as a custom audience that you can then upload to Facebook to retarget them basically which is really cheap traffic so you're gonna build a relationship that's one way of doing it as well there's loads of different things I, I honestly I need to really sit down and get into the nuts and bolts of this but one other thing I asked you George was um, what your turn rate is now you've you've given me the number here which is 17%, which is a little on the high side. Um, now, as a subscription business, all of us, subly included, all of us, our biggest challenge is churn. Now, it's great, subscription is fantastic because you get those customers on repeat, but there's always gonna be that point where they're gonna drop off, um, except for the rare cases where your, your business is a necessity, it's part of their life and their daily routine, that they need it and it actually solves a problem for them. So for more for the luxury side of things, like where you're a nice to have, it's really difficult because you're gonna have a churn, num uh, churn percentage and you're gonna have to really try and cut that down. So you're saying that you're not growing. So there's two, two ways of looking at it. Driving more traffic, driving more conversions, driving more sales. But on the other side of it, you've got the number of people who are leaving. So if those are equal, then you're not gonna grow. But if you could reduce one or increase the other, then you're gonna grow. So it's, it's like a deficit you know and and what you want to do is you want to change um, your churn if you can't change your growth to reduce it so that you're keeping more customers for longer so then you're gonna to start to see growth again so I would look at optimizing your churn rate and um, that we're working on some things at Subway right now to try and help with uh, you know uh, help with reducing churn and also collecting data and information so let's um, Let's look into ways that you could possibly reduce churn. Um, one way is uh, building, uh, you know, adding more of a surprise element, or maybe I've seen one thing that I really like is themed boxes. Uh, having been a subscriber of uh, various boxes, doing themes is really great because um, it keeps like adds more excitement. Um, another thing as well is loyalty discounts, so you can maybe offer loyalty discounts to existing customers. Another one is um, get on the phone with your customers, get feedback try and find out what they like, what they don't like, do more of what they like. Um, you know, there's, there's so many different things. Churn's a massive topic, uh, just as much as marketing, but I would look into ways of reducing that churn. I mean, we're kind of tight and limited on time. We've already gone over the 15 minutes, but that's kind of my fault for not, not knowing that you guys could actually hear me. <laughs> so, yeah, I would focus on reducing that churn. I would aim to get down to your ideal world, 5% and below, to be honest with you, but 17%'s a little on the high side aim to get to 12% for a starting point and uh, and yeah customer feedback is going to be probably number one way of actually doing that so reach out to the people who have cancelled ask them why they cancelled um, and try and mitigate it maybe offer them an incentive to come back as well all right thank you for that question George it's a good one um, Amy uh, how do you set a price point is there a certain percentage formula uh, yeah, this is this is quite straightforward, relatively speaking. Um, you are you're gonna want to know what your cost of goods is on average per month, or whatever your cycle is. You're also gonna have to uh, figure out what your cost of acquiring a customer is as well, and then you're gonna be able to figure out roughly based on that uh, with an estimate of what your lifetime value of a customer is. So that's again factoring in churn. Uh, how long is that customer going to stay? How much are they actually going to be paying you in money? Um, and then you can figure out what margins you're going to need to survive as a business because you've got other operational costs, you know, logistics as well. Um, and that comes under your cost of goods sold. And then like the keeping the lights on if you've got an office, etc. So yeah, there is a formula. I believe there's some calculators out there. Um, if you Google it, uh, subscription calculator maybe. Uh, I believe uh, Great Joy have one actually. And yeah, I think 
it's quite a straightforward formula, but the problem is there is an element of chicken in the egg because um, a lot of it is estimations at the beginning. Um, plus, when you're a startup, you don't really have that buyer's power to be able to like um, negotiate lower prices with uh, your suppliers. So, I would um, I would just start with some estimations first and set your price point from there. But make sure you've got some breathing space, and obviously, you want your pricing point to uh, you know be not too high that in comparison to if they were buying the products in. Uh, in the store somewhere, so um, so you've got an advantage, a competitive advantage as well. So just consider that, uh, and maybe look at competitors as well. I would check out competitors, see what their pricing points are, try and work backwards from there as well. Um, okay, moving on to the next question. That was a lot of questions. Um, Natasha, my actual question is, is there an easy way to manage brand partnerships when your subscription box company charges for marketing services? Okay, so it sounds like your subscription box is more of a marketing box. So rather than uh, you internally calling yourself, uh, you know, you're, you're buying product and selling it, you're actually offering the opportunity to reach X number of uh, possible customers to people who put products in your box. Um, that's just another way of, of, of painting it basically, but in terms of managing the brand partnerships, there, there's probably no facility out there from, for any existing platform to answer your question, but this just sounds like a, a, a relationship management issue. I would maybe look at using like a CRM system, which means a, a customer or contact relationship manager. Um, there's a bunch of affordable ones out there. Uh, I used to use, uh, I can't even remember now, I think it was like, CR, uh, something capsule. Um, it was really good for my last business. It's a good way of like keeping contact details up to date, tracking information about each uh, relationship, um, tracking emails as well. And uh, you can also add custom fields so you know like how much they owe, et cetera, et cetera. And you can also integrate these things with billing platforms for invoicing. So I would look at a CRM system for handling something like this. I hope that helps. Uh, one last one here before we move on to the example sites and breaking those down. Um, how do you ship worldwide? And more specifically, how do you manage customs in each country? Great question, Joseph. Um, this shipping worldwide, uh, you're just gonna have to find, uh, I would recommend something like ShipStation. So uh, we have an integration with ShipStation and ShipStation is great because uh, they basically integrate with multiple different shipping providers. Now, that will allow you to do shipping to uh, different countries because you, you've got access to like DHL, DHL Worldwide, FedEx, etc., etc. And depending on where the product is going, you can set up different rules uh, to use different shipping partners. And you can get like the quotes and the prices and estimates in the platform. Um, and regarding customs, uh, having I don't have a lot of experience in this, but having looked at the APIs for different shipping platforms, um, there is one that um, that basically mentions manifestos. So I'm guessing that that would be handled as part of one of these platforms. So that you're basically detailing what's inside the box and then your the manifesto goes through to the, the shipping partner and then they can see what's in the box and then that handles the custom side of things. I mean, it's, it's achievable. I don't know the ins and outs of it, but I would maybe rely rather than building your own solution or, you know, uh, dealing directly with these shipping companies, I'd use like a shipping platform like ShipStation, for example. Um, so check them out. Okay, that is all the questions I can see in the group anyway. If there's any more, because we have to move on now. Um, if there's any more questions that are in the comments, we will get back to you directly, or uh, Andre or myself. So I'm going to move on to uh, two websites that are, uh, are basically one of them I saw in our group recently and I thought it was a really good example for going through and giving feedback on. And uh, then an, another one commented or question, uh, asked the question inside of our uh, Facebook event for this, for this AMA. So I'm gonna go through them uh, in order that they came in actually. So Katie Schimmel, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, Schimmel, Schimmel, I'm, I'm sure it's Shimo. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, and apologies if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Uh, I, my name's always pronounced wrong as well. But um, So, Ju Julie Box. Um, now, the question was... Hold on, let me just pull up the group again. The event. Here we go. 
I launched my subscription company, Julie Box, on September 15th. I've received a very small number of sales from friends and family, but no real outside subscribers. I've done well on social media, but it's not translating into sales. Was wondering if anyone who has been successful would be willing to take a look at my website, box design, etc., and let me know any feedback on what the hang up might be. I've put a lot of time and money into this and don't want to give up, but I'm feeling very discouraged. Okay, first of all, don't feel discouraged. Uh, it's gonna, it, you know, this is a, just gonna take some persistence and patience uh, and, and, and you will get there. I think, um, I, let me just pull up your website. So let me just tell you, everybody, if you're sitting at a computer, please go to Katie's website, juliebox, J-E-W-L-Y-B-O-X.com. I think maybe in the next AMA, I might do this from my computer so that I can share my screen um, to help make this easier. But um, first of all, good job on getting friends and family to sign up. That's the first port of call. Uh, that's that's good because it allows you to get cash flow, which is number one. So let's go through your website real quick, um, Katie. So when I when I went through this yesterday, a couple of things that stood out to me that you could improve immediately, really easily as well, is there's thin content. So on your website, it looks visually appealing, but there's a lack of content, which basically breeds a lack of confidence for the visitors on your website. So first of all, I would add the story. Uh, I know you've got you've you know got all these snippets of text, but I'll try and add the story and, and, and about us, introduce the brand, tell the story about how it came about. Uh, I would add more pages. I would also add, um, you know, I know you've got. Hold on, let me uh, you know feature this month. Uh, when will I get my box? I would add an FAQs page as well, answering all of the common questions about shipping, billing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The second thing I would do is. Um, another page uh, with previous boxes and what was inside of them and I would also add a blog and, and I would you know post frequent content because it shows that you're a real business and that you're proactive obviously you've got your Instagram feed which is brilliant which is really good and it looks great as well um, another thing as well is yep you've got the contact page which is good um, allows people to see that they can contact you as testimonials I would get your customers to write testimonials, giving feedback, even if it is your friends and family, which makes it easier actually, um, and put them on, on your website to build trust, because that's number one here, is you want to build trust. When you've got a website that's got thin content, as I said, it kind of doesn't in spark that trust or instill the trust that is necessary to get a customer over the finish line. You may well have got traffic, which is fantastic, and have a good social media following, but the next step is, you want to build a relationship with them and build trust so they know they're they're going to get that box when when they pay for it and also they want to kind of know what they're you know what to expect another small thing on your uh, hero section on your home page um you've got this uh, like slider um i would first of all maybe add more text and also your your buttons i would make them bigger i can't you know the join button isn't too clear on my desktop anyway it's quite a big screen the um, the images are good. Um, I don't know if you took them yourself or if you got somebody else to take them or if they're you know. I would I'd make sure that they are your own images though. I think that it makes it more personal and but they do look really good uh, on here. The um, the value proposition when visiting the website, I would make sure that it's clear what it is exactly that you're doing in, in as short a time as possible. So try and go in with blind eyes, like make sure that you imagine being somebody else who doesn't know what your business is and, you know, look at your own website. This is like applicable to everybody. Um, in fact, most of this, um, sorry, the, the lighting keeps switching because it's really, really bright out. Um, yeah, I, I would try and look at your own website as if you weren't, a, you know, you didn't know who you were and then figure out how you can make the image, sorry, the, the, the get the message as clear as possible to the customer within the first like three seconds. That's what you want to do. Um, and yeah, apart from that, I think you're on the right track. So the, the thing is as well with additional content, it's going to help you for your SEO because um, the more content, the better with regards to Google. Um, if I think of anything else, I'm gonna respond to you separately. But for just now, those are the main ones that jump out at me. Um, your box looks great, by the way. I love the Hello Gorgeous, that's brilliant. I like that. Um, all right, okay. That's the main ones. And then the second website I'm gonna go through was submitted by Rashmi. Uh, 
Rashmi from India. My, subs my subscription box name is Exobox. I would like to know how to get subscribers from the target audience. I've tried all social media engagements, but I've been futile to grow uh, the number of subscribers. So you sent me through the link to your website. You've told me that um, your target audience is age range from 18 to 45, men, women, young adults. And you're only shipping to India, but you're looking to reach uh, globally eventually. Um, and the other thing as well that you detailed, hold on, uh, your combo box where you combine food, books, and merchandise. Okay, so first of all, the reason I asked that question was because I'll be honest with you, it wasn't 100% clear what it is that you do from, from first of all, the, the name of your business and um, by looking at your website. So looking at your website now, and guys, if you want to join me on this one, it's xobox.co.in. And... Um, so Rashmi, uh, let me just give you some feedback here. So you've got this really big banner section at the top. Um, it's not it's still not 100% clear just looking at your website what it is that you actually are doing. Now that's number one, I would fix that and it's an easy fix. You wanna tell them, the customer, when they visit, you're gonna get this if you subscribe. And you wanna make it as clear as possible, uh, you know, within three seconds as I said before. Uh, the other thing as well is that you're saying you're saying you're this combo box. Now just be careful with that because you don't want to, conf you know, focus is kind of a really important element as well as to not confuse your customers. Um, I think it should work, but it depends. I, I keep seeing uh, Diwali gift. So if that is what you are, then I wouldn't necessarily call yourself a combo box because it could be confusing because it actually even confused me. I could I would maybe call yourself the Diwali box um, or Diwali gift box, and then. Apart from that, you know, you've got your, you've got great content like our August box. You've got, you know, showing examples of the co the, the products that are actually in there, which is really good. Uh, you've got your social media, your inter, in, in, sorry, Instagram link. Uh, you've got uh, an email subscribe, uh, another one for UKT. I would actually add that an email subscribe list, uh, like a, a sign up form to try and capture as many uh, emails that you can contact later as well. Um, that's that's good that you've got your that on your site, Rashmi. Um, but you've got lots of content, which is great. So you've kind of got that right, but it's just your initial value proposition. When you look on the website, it's not entirely clear what it is that you do. Um, now, I would I would clear that up, and I'd also get a call to action in that top section of your website. I mean, you're not necessarily going to get people reading it and clicking subscribe straight away, but at least people know where they can subscribe once they look at the, 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 the header of your page. Um, Apart from that, uh, I know you're based in India and shipping to India. Uh, subscription works slightly differently there in my my experience from what I've heard over the years that they, they do uh, cash on delivery. Is that if that's correct? Let me know. But um, yeah, I think apart from that, you've got the the idea correct. It's just that initial like getting the message across. Um, and apart from that, I think you're. You're good. Uh, your website loads relatively slow. I'm guessing your servers are in India. It looks like you're using a, an agency possibly to build your website and manage it. Um, if you're gonna go global, you're gonna have to get a, a, a distributed server set up so that you can make sure your website loads fast uh, on ev in every country that you're actually selling in. Um, I would uh, recommend that to everybody actually. I mean, platforms make that easy. They usually have that handled for you, like uh, like us, subly. Um, but if you're hosting your own site and building your own site and managing it, then you're gonna wanna make sure that your, your hosting setup is fast loading for everywhere in the world, regardless of where you are. Okay, so I think that covers it. Um, so yeah, guys, Thank you so much for asking all these questions. Again, just to reiterate, we're gonna be doing AMAs every two weeks, um, similar format to what we just did today. If you liked the format, let me know. If you liked that we did, um, you know, take, took example websites and gave and me going through them and giving feedback and like quick wins to help increase that conversion rate, uh, let me know because we will do more of those. I think it's a nice format and I think it could work really well. Um, uh, we would only be able to do one or two per, per every two weeks though, but um, I, th I feel like it's a good way for people to see real life examples and also be able to understand where they may be going wrong with their, with, you know, with their own websites. So if you like the format, please comment, please like the uh, video stream regardless if it's live or if this is being watched after the fact, um, so we know that this is the right direction. So keep asking questions in the comments of this video. Um, 
we will get back to you, Andrea and myself. And um, keep up, keep engaging on the group because there's loads of people with lots of good advice, and um, I think this could be work work really well. So I'm excited for these AMAs. This is new to me. Um, we've had really good feedback the last one. Please, please give your feedback. Not only does it like help others see that it's going to help them. It also makes me feel really good. <laughs> Gives me warm fuzzies and, and, and uh, it makes me feel inspired to help more, to be honest with you. So um, keep up, keep it up, guys. Um, I know it's, it's tough out there. I wrote a blog post recently on if you go to stephanpretty.com uh, or sorry, m.stephanpretty.com, you'll see a blog post I wrote about like what it takes to really become successful and like how, you know, there's a just, you know, people are bombarded with success stories and they, they're convinced it's going to be easy and that, you know there is there's the realism element that we all need to remember that this is hard work so keep it up you will get there persistence is 100 percent necessary and patience and don't be disheartened it's going to take trial and error um that, that's that's a fact um but i believe in you guys and i think together we can get there so that's why i want to help so thanks for watching uh, feel free to follow us on Twitter, Subly Team, at Subly Team. Instagram as well, we've started posting on Instagram, it's been long enough, I know. And also sign up to our email newsletter on our blog, we're, we're, we're doing giveaways. We've actually got this checklist, if you're new to starting a subscription box, we've created this, uh, like I think it's nine or ten point checklist for starting a subscription box. Uh, you'll see it come up on our blog when you go on it, subly.co forward slash blog. Um, you just put your email address in and it'll download it immediately. Um, so yeah, I'm... I'm excited for these AMAs, love to hear your feedback, and until then guys, uh, I'll see you in two weeks.